In this session, we will demonstrate how we can use both PDF and CSV files to bring data into DHIS2. For PDF files, we will go through the steps of generating a PDF form for offline data entry, filling in this PDF form, and uploading this PDF form to DHIS2. For the CSV file, we will briefly review the CSV format that is required to upload data into DHIS2. We will also upload the CSV file to DHIS2 and show you that it has been successfully imported. Let's go ahead and get started with the session. In this session, we will show you how you can bring data into DHIS2 using both PDF and CSV formats. We will start by using the PDF format to bring data into DHIS2 for Woodpecker Health Center, for the Syndromic Surveillance Dataset, for week 40 in 2016. We can see that these parameters currently do not have any data. We can generate the PDF form that is used to enter data from within DHIS2. We can do this from the Dataset Maintenance application. We'll go to our apps and find the Dataset application. We will go over this application in a lot more detail later on, but for now we just want to show you how to download the PDF data entry form. Here I can find the syndromic surveillance dataset. I can click on Actions, and then click on Get PDF for data entry. This will open up a PDF file on my computer. In the PDF form, we have to enter an organization unit identifier. This uniquely identifies the organization unit that I am entering data for. In this case, I have the identifier for Woodpecker Health Center. Don't worry too much about where this identifier comes from. Just know that it's typically provided to a user if they are entering data using this format. Next, we select the period. We indicated that we will work with week 40 in 2016. After we have entered the identifier and the period, we can go ahead and enter our data. Once we have entered our data, we can go ahead and save the PDF file. Now that we have saved the PDF file, we are now ready to bring this data into DHIS2. Back in DHIS2, we'll go to our apps and go to the Import Export application. We want to import data, so we will select the Data Import module within this application. We'll choose our file. The file's location is entirely dependent on where we have saved it. Then we'll choose the format. In this case, we're working with the PDF format, so we will select PDF as the format of the file. Once we have selected the file and the format, we can go ahead and click on Import. We can check the import summary. This indicates that six values have been imported into DHIS2. These are the six data values that we entered in the PDF file previously. We can go ahead and check if this data has been imported correctly by going back to our data entry. With Woodpecker Health Center selected, we'll select the syndromic surveillance data set and week 40 in 2016. We can now see that the data we entered in our PDF file has been imported into DHIS2. When we started off with this example, there was no data present for this organization unit, data set, and period combination. PDF demonstrates one of the ways we can enter data into DHIS2 fully offline. We just have to be a bit careful. If there are any changes to the form online, these will not be reflected in the PDF forms, 
and new PDFs will have to be sent out. Additionally, if the data is updated on the PDF form, then this somehow needs to be reflected online in the system, either by importing the PDF form again, or by having someone log in and changing these data values online directly. Let's go through one more example, but in this case, we will import data using the CSV format. We will import data for Wordpecker Health Center for the syndromic surveillance data set in week 10 in 2016. Let us quickly review the CSV format that we will import into DHIS2. If you want to learn more about this format, please have a look at the documentation. And if you want to learn more about importing data into DHIS2 in general, please consider participating in the Customization Academy. This format will be imported into DHIS2 for those parameters that we discussed earlier. In order to do this, we'll go back into DHIS2 and access the Import Export application. So back in DHIS2, we will go to our apps and access the Import Export application. We'll use the Data Import module within this application once again. We'll choose our file. Its location is completely dependent on where it's stored on your own computer. We'll select the format, which in this case is CSV. And then we will import our data values. We can check our import summary. It has imported six data values. Note that we can see in the import summary that it has ignored one row. This is the row that I used for my column headings. This is not actually necessary within the CSV file, but can be used in order to organize it a bit more. We can go ahead and check if these data values have been imported successfully by going back to our data entry application. With Woodpecker House Center selected, we will select our data set as well as our period. We can see for this organization unit, data set, and period combination that the values that were in that CSV file have now been imported into DHIS2. Importing data into DHIS2 has several functions as we discussed in the presentation. In particular, if you don't want to re-enter a large portion of legacy data or data from another system, we can use this type of import to bring data into DHIS2 without having to manually enter everything all over again. Let us quickly review some of the concepts that we discussed in this particular session. We demonstrated the use of both PDF and CSV formats in order to import data into DHIS2. In DHIS2, we can generate a PDF form. This allows us to enter our data completely offline. We can then bring this data into DHIS2 using the Import-Export application. We also have CSV files. These can be used to import large quantities of data into DHIS2. In fact, there are several types of file formats that we can use to import data into DHIS2. While we demonstrated how this works in practice within DHIS2, in order to learn more about importing data, you might want to consider the Customization Academy. This wraps up the session on data collection methods. In the next session, we will show you how to create datasets using the organization units and data elements that you have previously created in other sessions. Please let us know if you have any questions about the concepts that we have discussed in this particular demonstration.